dimensions and units. What are they? What's the difference between them? A dimension is something we're actually going to measure, a length. And then the unit is what are we going to count as one? I mean, unit means one. How much of this length is one of it? Like one centimeter, one inch, one foot, one meter. Those are the units. So units of length include meter, centimeter, inch, foot, mile, etc. And the SI unit, System International, the metric system unit, is the meter. What else? Time. Time is going to be measured the way we usually do, in seconds. We can also talk about minutes and hours and days, etc. But the primary basic unit is a second. What's another fundamental thing we can measure? Mass, the quantity of matter. The SI unit for mass is the kilogram. Mass can also be measured in lots of other ways. The gram, the pound of mass. The English system units get a little wonky on this. There's pounds mass and pounds force. Uh, because the English system of units is actually older than physics. It's older than Newtonian mechanics. Uh, and so they're a little confused about mass and force in that system. There are standards, and you know engineers cope with it, but it's a lot easier to stick to metric when you're doing science. So the kilogram, gram, that's what we're usually going to use for mass. The SI units are meter, second, kilogram. The dimensions are length, time, and mass. Here's another one you might not think of. Number, like actually counting something. Well, what do we measure numbers in? I mean, we said a unit is one, so isn't that already set? One, two, three, that's how many we have. But if you have lots of them, a great many of them, you might have a dozen, a score, or more realistically, a mole. And one mole happens to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, you may know from chemistry class. Here's one more. That, again, that you might not think of right away. Angle. What do we use to measure angle? You're used to thinking of, most familiarly, with degrees. And in a trigonometry class, you probably learned about radians. In a physics class, both of those are going to get frequently used, as well as revolutions. When I say I turn like this, I could be saying 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians, a quarter turn, a quarter revolution. Those are all ways to describe an amount of angle. The further in math you go, the more sense radians make as the fundamental unit. But in intro physics, degrees are pretty often being used as well. So it'll depend on your class which one, and you probably will have to switch back and forth between them. So keep an eye out what mode your calculator is in when you're using the trig buttons. In most calculations, it won't matter, but if you press those trig buttons, it's very important whether you're in degrees or radians. So these are what we call the fundamental dimensions and the fundamental units. There are also derived units, combinations. I also want to point out this is not the only system. You can come up with all sorts of weird systems of units and dimensions. Uh, you could measure everything as powers of temperature if you wanted to be crazy. But this is the very common system. The common systems use length, time, and mass as the most fundamental quantities. Then force, for example, is a physics concept that has dimensions of mass times length over time squared. And so the units are kilogram times meter over second squared. And that's quite a mouthful, so we call it a newton for short. So there are many derived units, watts, joules, and those are covered in the rest of a physics class. So that is a short introduction to dimensions versus units. Always write your units when you're first learning physics. The ones who do that get higher grades, I'm telling you. All right, good luck.